So I woke up this morning with um, no electricity of the primary AC panel. The air conditioners were still working, so there was a secondary panel was, however the primary was not. Uh, came out, checked the breakers at the pedestal, make sure they were okay. Um, also made sure um, I had power at the pedestal itself. I then came back and unplugged each of the uh, power cords at the boat connection and uh, checked them to make sure they all, I also had power. That's uh, interesting, let me show you what I found. This is not great. So this is the primary AC panels um, cord and you can see it's uh, it got very hot. It uh, didn't quite burn that, but it melted some of the plastic around it, some of the plastic housing. And if I look at the actual pegs in here themselves, and I've disconnected everything, that one's completely loose. And I suspect it's because it got so hot, it loosened up the um, it loosened up the plastic housing in there. So I'm about to take this apart and see what we're finding here. I'm um, hoping it was just a wet or loose connection out here that caused that, but not 100% sure yet. I went ahead and removed the screws around this and gave myself just a little bit of slack inside. I'll need to get a screwdriver and pry this off. All right, so I've pulled this out of here, and sure enough, on our hot leg, we have a pretty good um, a pretty good melting of the sheathing right there at the connection. So uh, let's see what we find. Unfortunately, <clears throat> where this wire goes into the boat, there's not a lot of slack there. So um, I need to go loosen it up down below. In the bunk of the master stateroom, and um, <clears throat> this is where we have the access panel for a lot of the wires that go up to the helm. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these screws <clears throat> and then we'll uh, take a look up in here. See if we can loosen up that wiring and give yourself a little bit of slack for working on it. You can see this, so basically this panel slides out and it gives us access to it right in here. Yeah, baby. Just to give you an idea, once that panel's down, there's quite a few wires in here, but right here, I don't know if you can see this, this is the section that goes up into the helm station. I'm just looking for my power cord here, and I see it. Boy, they don't give a lot of slack in these things, unfortunately. All right, they definitely don't give you a lot of slack in here, so I'm going to see if I can get the camera to take a video of this. I'm just going to set it on the bunk aiming upward. i just kind of work this last wire over a little bit. I gotta figure out a way of sealing this. I got dirt dauber dirt coming down on me. Yeah, this is boy, that got so hot. Look at that. That thing is completely melted out of there. Wow. That's just destroyed. I'm gonna have to go buy another one of these today. You can see here, this is this one seems to be okay. Angled leg is my ground, upper left, and you guys can see this, and I'm going to use it in my camera so I'll remember where the wiring connections go as well, which is always a good way to do this. I have a feeling that was a loose connection. Boy, that is corroded right there at that connection. That's not good. So I'm gonna have to trim that back a bit. And I believe everybody knows there is no place on a boat for wire nuts. And this is not a permanent solution. This is a very temporary solution that I'm gonna put on here just to keep these from being exposed to anything else while I, um, I do plug the other panel back in 
I just want to make sure that if any of the neutrals are tied together incorrectly, that there's no chance that anything, you know, kind of comes out here in short. So um, I'm only putting these together um, with this wire nut for that purpose only. Um, while I run to the store to buy the, the new connection. And I am actually just going to cover that with anything that keeps that one from being exposed. Like I said, this is not a solution, it's merely just a uh, temporary thing here. Put this one back on just so I can get the air conditioners going and obviously when I uh, when I do any work because I'm not completely familiar with the entire electrical system on this boat you never know if somebody wired something incorrectly and I don't want a chance that any of these are crossed so I'll disconnect the power from down here for the air conditioning units when I uh, when I get ready to do this work as well but this way at least the boat can remain cool for the cats while I'm not getting my parts All right, I was able to pull a little bit of slack up from where this comes up from underneath the bilge, up the walls, and through this channel to give myself some slack up top. So I'm gonna go up top in the helm where I can pull this out a little bit more and cut off any of the part of this that was shorting out or right, so I think corroded. I really found out what this issue was. Um, where the actual hotline connected to the 30 amp uh, connection, it was a slightly loose connection. And I think over time that loose connection was causing a little bit of arcing. Uh, and ultimately it ended up getting um, hot enough that it melted the connector and when it started getting very loose it ultimately shorted out so I've been able to pull some slack here and I'm going to now connect oh, he's a big it. turtle huh yeah. you think he likes that piece of bagel yeah. Yeah. Man, he's a good size one I'd say. it's hard to see him at this angle with the camera though all right, so I've got my new plug here, and it's now time to get this stuff connected. First thing we're going to do is make sure we don't have power coming anything. What I've done is I pulled both power connections off, the generator's off, the inverter's off, so I shouldn't, even if there was a wiring problem, I shouldn't get any back feeds here. That wasn't the turtle. It wasn't? That was... What was it? Catfish. A catfish? Again. Oh, wow. Was it, the, was it the big catfish or a small catfish? The big catfish. Now, as I mentioned before, I believe I, I found what this was, what the problem was here. Um, so I'm now just stripping this back a little bit. And as you can see, you know, our cable's nice and... Oh, I don't know why that shocked me. It scared me. It didn't shock me. Um, cable's good just in here a little bit so I'm gonna trim this back a little bit to the spot where it's good it is there we do the same with both of these and make this a little bit longer A little bit concerned about what this secondary ground is. Um, it appears to only be jumpering between the ground on the secondary plug, but I'm going to go ahead and keep it the same way. This needs to go on on the other side of the wood, not on this side. You see the turtle again? Yes. All right, keep an eye on him. Get on here. I'm gonna put two of these screws in here to hold the gasket in place because I know what I'll do. I'll put this whole thing together and have forgotten it. So 
this is my way of making sure I remember it. So time to strip a half inch of wire off each of these. Yes, baby. Look. And then we're going to do the same with our ground. And the ground can actually be a slightly um, thinner wire. If I was running this with raw wire, it's a way to save a few bucks, but this one is um, all three strand bounded together, so no real reason to do that here. This is going to be the hardest one to get in there since they're double pulled in here. And put a little dielectric grease on here. Ground lug. I've got it buried as deep as it'll go, and just a matter of tightening it up. Put a little bit more of this dielectric grease on each of these. All right, so same thing here. We want to push this in all the way, and I'm going to hold this here while I do it. Make sure I have it secured very well. It's important you make sure that it's only secured on the actual um, conductive portion. You certainly don't want that to be uh, doing that on the on the, the insulation. <clears throat> Got both of those in. I'm going to redo these grounds. I don't feel like that's in there buried as deep as it should be. I'm going to redo that. Might have it in there all the way. What I do now is all good solid connections. I don't usually like to use the drill to tighten these things up all the way. Just get them started and then I'll snug them by hand. Just because I don't want to strip the wood or anything like that. This is all hardwood cabinet. Given what just happened, I think I'm going to undo this other one and I'm going to make sure that all of the connections on this one are equally as strong. So it was a little hard to see that. I actually realized I left that little um, <laughs> cover open so it was blocking the view of the camera. But what I did was I removed the second 30 amp service below that top one, and I just made sure all the connections were real tight on it. I actually did find that the, um, the hot lug was a little bit loose on that one as well. So I went ahead and tightened it, and that'll be part of my annual maintenance that I'll just make sure I do on the boat. It uh, would probably take 15 minutes to uh, you know, take those things off the cabinet and make sure all those lugs are tight. And over time, if any vibration does loosen them up, uh, certainly is, um, is, uh, is a time well spent to do it. Okay. 
we've got that so now it's a matter of putting the cover back on not always the easiest thing to get to here but I do like the way this works it kind of sits on a few pegs down here and then it just has a small latch right up here Lift that up and latch it and she's sealed in there so, gives me my helm cover I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I'm going to try and see what I can do here. So, basically just putting the um, access panel back on where all those wires go. It's just a matter of... Can't do what? Well... I gotta tell you, I'm not impressed with walking like anything right now. If you pooped in your pants and didn't tell me, honey, that's not good, right? Why'd you do that? <laughs> so all in all, it was actually a pretty easy fix. Um, nerve wracking and the good news is it was a corroded connection right here. You know, this is the second time in less than a year we've run into one of these. We really need to replace the wiring on this boat. Um, it's been neglected for a lot of years. It's frankly not set up the best. Uh, I've already found some places that are not according to ABYC standards, which is the American uh, AYBC, American Yacht and Boat Council. Um, so I need to redo the whole thing. Um, and doing that's a little bit of a hassle. You sort of have to redo it all at one time, right? You can't do it piece by piece very easily. Um, and we live in a board, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to wait until we get this coach house wall replaced. I don't want to replace, uh, I don't want to do the electric while I still have some potential leaks here and there on the on coach house wall. Once that's done, um, we're sort of band-aiding these little things like we run into here. And when that's done, we'll completely re replace the entire um, AC electrical system. And that's everything from shore power connections. Um, we'll probably put a, uh, a galvanic isolator on here. Um, we'll have to put a breaker box back here at this connection because AYBC also says from the place the shore power goes into the boat you shouldn't have a run of more than 10 feet to the primary breaker. Um, we probably have about 15 or 18 feet before it actually gets to the main breaker panel which means that we have 15 to 18 feet of sort of unprotected line um, which could cause an issue right so something like what I ran into here that wouldn't have avoided that but if we were to have a short somewhere uh, further up in that, let's just say six feet or so, eight feet or so in, if I started a place where it maybe was rubbing against something, right? Uh, rubbing against a line or a, or a stringer or something, and that caused a short, I wouldn't have something to trip it short of the actual breaker box at the marina itself. And that's a little much to rely on. I want something on board my own boat that I can trust rather than relying on what the marina has. So. Um, you know, this is a short video it was uh, a relatively easy fix and at some point in the not too distant future we will have a multi-series part for a multi-part series for sure around replacing the electrical system like i said it's gonna be everything from shore power galvanic isolator uh, breakers new breaker panels secondary breaker panel how we connect um, the generator to both breaker panels through um, shore generator and um, uh, and uh, inverter switches um, we're going to have the charger on this, the battery charger, the, the converter with a 3500 watt um, sine wave inverter in the boat so that we can run either on generator, on shore power, or on battery power um, inverted to 110 volts. So we have a lot of different options, but um, honestly it's, it's kind of this old adage of building a mansion one room at a time, and, and it's sometimes the handyman wasn't great. So we really need to bulldoze the thing down and redo the electrical system. Uh, we've known ever since we looked at this boat at the first survey, we really needed to. Uh, just put it off, put it off. Okay. From Gil and the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, I sure do hope you uh, liked this video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up, um, subscribe to it. Uh, if you can, hit the little bell icon just to the right of the subscribe button. That will notify you when we post new videos. And if you did find it useful, please do share it with other people and tell them about our channel. We certainly would love to uh, increase our viewership. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for telling me. Well, you heard it right there, folks. Tell everybody what you did. I peed in poop. Where? In my diaper. Ah. Is your face painted like a lion? Yeah. Or a tiger? Tiger. Tiger. This is quite a view. We're laying on our back underneath the electrical panel. Yes. And I'm looking. Bye. Bye. Wave. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Well, the sailing vessel Green Chaser. Bye. 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 Hey everybody, thanks for watching, and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even Tumblr. Please take a moment and go over to our website at svdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, fellow dreamers.